Hi, in this video we will look at how compound interest builds and affects your student loan balance. The first example, Paul takes out a $50,000 loan to pay for college. If the loan has a 5% interest rate, how much does he owe after each year of college? Assume interest is compounded annually or once per year. All right, now let's write down some information that we know. First, the amount that we are borrowing, which is called our principal, P, is $50,000. Second, the interest rate, R, is 5%, or written as a decimal, 0 0.05. If we want to find out how much he owes after each year of college, we're going to assume one year, two years, three years, and then four years passes. Now, I think the best way to set this up will be using a table where the first column of our table is the years that have passed, and the second column of our table is the amount owed after each year. Amount owed after each year. And uh, we're going to let our years be 0, 1, 2, 3, and four. We'll start at year zero because that's one answer that we can write down right off the bat. At year zero, when this loan begins, we owe $50,000. To go then from year zero to year one, we compute the 5% interest that accrues over the course of that year by taking our $50,000 and multiplying by 0 0.05 the 5% interest. If you check that in your calculator, you should get $2,500. That is the interest that gets added on to the loan at the end of the year. So if we add that to the original $50,000 plus 2,500, that is equal to $52,500. So at the end of our first year of college, we now owe $52,500. We can continue on in this manner now for year two at the end of our second year of college by taking $52,500, multiplying by 0 0.05, the interest rate again, so calculating how much interest we accrue during our second year of school. We owe more money. So that means we have to, we, we accrue more interest. So that is $2,625, 2625 in interest that we owe after our second year of school. Add that again to the, to, not to $50,000, but to our $52,500 plus $2,625. And we find now that after our second year of school, we owe $55,000. $125, and we'll add that now to our table after year two. We owe $55,125. So after the first year, we, we owe a little bit more, so we have to pay a little bit more interest. Uh, we can keep going here. Two more to represent for year three. We take our $55,125, let me just add on my years here. That was year one, this is year two, this here is year three. So we take our 55,125. Now in this one, I wanna kind of eliminate one step because in each of the previous years, first we multiplied by 0 .05, 0 0.05, and then added the original amount on. And did that in the first year, 0 0.05, and added the previous year's amount uh, to that step. We can condense this into one step by taking, instead of just 0 0.05, but rather one plus 0 0.05. And what that does is the one represents the original amount that you, are, that you owe for the student loan plus 0 0.05, 5% for the interest. And so we kind of combine those two steps into one uh, one calculation. And if you do that for our year three, what we end up with is $57,881.25. And I will add that into our table. So at the end of our junior year of college, we owe 
point twenty five. So we lose kind of the individual interest amount, but we we eliminate one step from the problem. All right, and now for our fourth year, we're going to do the same thing just one more time. Uh, we take our uh, fifty seven thousand eight eighty one point twenty five. And now we multiply by 1 plus 0 0.05 again. We check that in our calculator. And if you type that in, we should get 60,775.31. And I rounded that to the 31 cents. There were a couple other values after that decimal point, but it rounds to 31 cents. So 60,775.31. So after four years of college, our student loan balance has gone from 50000 up to almost $61,000 that we now owe for, for, our, for our loans. Now, we can represent this for any year T. So if I go, instead of looking at each of these individual years, let's say I want to write a function that finds the value, the balance of my student loans for any year T. Well, what did we do? We took our $50,000 that we started out with, $50,000 that we started out with, and in each step, we multiplied by 1.05. We found the 5% interest and added it to the original, 5% interest and added it to the original. So that 1.05 that we multiply by over and over and over, we can raise that to the T power, and then that, that gives us a, a rule for our function. Now, the general formula that we used here it looks like this, A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N times T. That is the compound interest formula. Compound interest formula. And it looks a lot more complicated than the math that we did. But the reason for that is because our N in the denominator and the N up in the exponent we're both one for the number of compounding periods. Compounded annually or once per year means that your interest is calculated once per year. In our second example, Paul still takes out the $50,000 student loan. It's still at a 5% interest rate, but the difference here is the interest is compounded daily. So what that means is that at the end of every day, the interest for that one day is calculated and added to the balance of the loan. So that would mean that the interest comp, uh, uh, is calculated 365 times every year. N equals 365, that same N from the last problem. So we have uh, the variables in this problem, in this formula that I wrote down with the last example, are A is the amount uh, that you have at the end, R is your interest rate in decimal form, P is a principal, is the amount that you, uh, the amount of your loan that you take out at the beginning, N is the number of compounding periods that I just mentioned, and T is the number of years. So the values that we know in this problem are our, our principal, again, is 50,000. Our interest rate is 5% or 0 0.05 the compounding periods I just wrote down, and T, it again asks for each year of college. So what we'll do is we'll substitute the values that we know into this equation, the compound interest formula, and then make a table for each year of college. All right, so our formula, when we substitute in our known values, P, 50,000, times one plus R is 5%, or 0 0.05, over n 365. Now remember the last problem, we didn't have that in the formula because we compounded once per year and dividing by one doesn't change the, the value of r. Similarly, in the exponent, multiplying by one would not have changed the value of t. But in this problem, we have 365 in those two different um, places in our compound interest formula. So now what we can do is we can take and substitute in different values of t to find what we owe at the end of each year. Now the rest of the problem is calculator work, and I've done the calculations ahead of time, but you can check each of these on your own in your calculator. At the end of the first year, 
we would type into our calculator 50,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 365 to the 365 times 1. And if you do that, you end up with a balance at the end of the first year of $52,563.37. If you check for the last problem, it's a little bit more than at the end of the first year uh, in the last problem. I'm going to fill in the rest of my table now at the end of two years. And again, we would just change that exponent of t from a 1 to a 2. We owe now $55,258.17. Each of these numbers, by the way, I did round to the nearest penny. Uh, at the end of the third year, $58,091, so $091.12. And finally, at the end of the fourth year, we owe 61069 $69.30. So again, comparing the last problem to this problem, the difference between compounding annually and compounding daily, which is the way that it actually works at banks, is we, need, we end up paying a little bit more because the interest is computed and added on to the balance of the loan more often, so it's based on a larger amount. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to add one more line to my table here. Some uh, times after you graduate college, uh, you're allowed to defer paying on your loans for up to three more years. So if we take and substitute seven into our compound interest formula, just to represent uh, deferring our loan for three years and not paying it down at all for three additional years, your balance would be $70,951.68. So it jumps up almost $10,000 more by not starting to pay it down. All right, that is the end of this video on compound interest and loan, student loans. Thank you for listening.